Today we are going to learn about taking decimals and converting them into fractions. But one of the things that we need to start with is taking a look at our decimal chart just as a refresher. Now here on the screen I have a 0 in the 1 spot and I have a 6 in the 10 spot. And I have it here because I just want to start with this. So of course we have our decimal here right in the middle. So we have 0 0.6, which is 6 tenths. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and figure out what we need to do to convert that to a fraction. So here you can see we have 0 0.6, which we said earlier, if we wrote it in word form, it would be 6 tenths. Now converting decimals into fractions is actually very easy. What you do is just be very patient, pay attention to where the decimal placement is, and reading those decimals and converting them to fractions. So this says 0 0.6, which is 6 tenths, which is also the same thing as 6 over 10. We actually say it the same way, 6 tenths. When we say the fraction, we say it the same way as we would the decimal. So 0 0.6 equals 6 tenths, which also equals 6 tenths in fraction form. Now, notice that our 6 tenths in fraction form can be reduced. So let's come down here and let's look at 6 tenths as a fraction a little closer. Now we need to reduce this fraction, so we need to remember our rules about reducing fractions. Whatever we reduce our fraction by, it has to be the same on the top and the bottom of the fraction. So we need to think about what is the greatest common factor between the numbers 6 and 10. Now we know we have the factors of 1, 2, 3, and 6 for 6. So of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6, what can we also divide into 10 besides the number 1? And that would be 2. So we should divide by 2 on both top and bottom. And when we reduce that, we have 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our final answer is going to be 3 fifths. So as a recap, 0 0.6, when we say it in word form for decimals, it's 6 tenths, which is the same thing as 6 over 10, or 6 tenths, when we look at the fraction form. However, we cannot leave the 6 tenths in that higher fraction because it can be reduced. So after we reduce the 6 tenths by dividing by 2, we end up with a final answer of 3 over 5, or 3 fifths. Let's look at another one just to make sure. Okay, here we have our decimal chart again. So I've placed a 1, a 0, 0.65 within the chart. So 1 is in the 10 spot, 0 is in the 1 spot, then we have our decimal, then 6 in the tenths, and 5 in the hundredths. So we would read this 10 and 65 hundredths. So 10 and 65 hundredths. So let's take a, take a look at this by converting it into a fraction. So we're starting out with 10.65, which is 10 and 65 hundredths. So this is the way it looks in word form. 10 and 65 hundredths. And again, we're going to write it in fraction form the way that we say it. So we know we need a whole number 10, okay? So we definitely need our whole number 10. So that's there. We can go ahead and put our 10 there. But our fraction, because it has and, our fraction is going to be 65 hundredths, which is going to be 65 over 100. Now, just as we did before, we can still reduce this fraction. So what we need to do is to go ahead and bring our 10 over because when we reduce fractions we leave the whole numbers alone we're just reducing the fraction okay not the whole number so now we're looking at the 65 over 100 asking ourselves what can we reduce 65 and 100 
both by. So what is their common factor? What is their greatest common factor? Now remembering our divisibility rules, we know that 65 is ending in 5 and 100 is ending in the 0. So we know that both 65 and 100 can definitely be divided by 5. So let's give divide by 5 a try. So if we divide the top and the bottom by 5 to reduce our fraction, what we will get is 65 divided by 5 is 13, and 100 divided by 5 is 20. Now looking at 13 and 20, we are finished because we cannot reduce that fraction any further. So what we can conclude is that our original decimal, 10.65, or 10 and 65 hundredths, is equal to 10 and 13 twentieths after it's been reduced in fraction form. I hope this helped you. I hope this tutorial can make it a little easier for you to write fractions from decimals and convert those decimals into fractions. Um, I hope that it uh, clarifies the process for you and that you learned a little bit today. So I want to say thank you and check back with us again with Tutor with Angel. Thank you.